believe it or not, there is such a thing as too much boost. Today, I'll be having a go at porting my Falcon's rear turbo housing to try and get some more control and hopefully prevent boost spikes or creep. And this is a bit of a spoiler, but it works so well on this car that I then had to look at solutions for why it was making too little boost. Don't worry about that part, it should only affect the NA turbo conversion guys and relates to the boost reference for the wastegate actuator. Let's just worry about the porting first. Welcome back into Brownie's Garage. For anyone new to the channel, the car I'll be working on today is my BA Falcon that we've just finished a NA Plus turbo conversion on using mostly factory parts. Those factory parts include a Garrett 3576 turbo from an FG which for the purpose of this video is the same as any factory Falcon turbos. It's on a standard manifold, standard dump pipe, cat, XR6 turbo exhaust, all standard. I knew these setups were notorious for poor boost control anytime you add a better flowing dump or cat or even a cat back exhaust, but was a little surprised to see it on my setup without any of these. From more reading and discussions, it seems the spikes when coming on boost are not so unusual, and a factor in this could also be the TurboSmart 7 PSI wastegate actuator I'm using as our only form of boost control on this. Not so bad within a reasonable range. It can actually make the car feel a lot quicker and playing with it as I am may hurt our quarter mile times coming in the next video. But my concern is that in really cold weather, if I shift down or really load it up while rolling, I've seen a spike to between 9 and 12 PSI, but then when I stayed in it, it was also looking like it was continuing to creep up even higher. Maybe it would have sorted itself out if I stayed in it to higher RPM, and I'd just need to man up, but being a skinny rod engine, and knowing this is a potential issue for these turbo setups already, I've decided I'd like to at least try to improve it a little. And having proper control can only help us in the future too, if we want to turn this up more. It's a good time to remind you though that I am a backyard hack, just giving you a go. I don't know what I'm doing, but I have done all the research I can, and I'm happy to share the results and own up if I make any mistakes. Even if I do, hopefully we'll learn from that, or from someone down in the comments below. So, Boost control issues like this commonly come from the wastegate not being able to flow enough exhaust away from the turbine. Let's have a look more at how that works while we look at how to potentially fix this. This is a stock exhaust side turbo housing. Your exhaust gas flows from the engine into the turbo here where it can either go around to spin the turbine and make all that magical boost we like, then out the exhaust, or it bypasses this and goes out through the wastegate port and flap that opens and closes to control how much flows through here. If this port or flapper isn't big enough or enough exhaust gas isn't directed to flow out of this, then your car will just make more and more boost until something else limits it. Ideally, this wastegate would be somewhere directly in the path of the flow of the exhaust to make getting it out easier. But on these internal wastegates, all of the exhaust gas has to make a 90 degree turn to get out of there. So that's the two issues we're trying to sort today. The actual size of the wastegate opening, as well as the sharp turn those gases have to make, even if there is enough room to flow more. That second factor has actually been mentioned to me as being a bigger factor on these in particular than the port size itself. But I'm not actually working on this factory housing. As I'm filming this now, I've already done all the porting work I'm about to show, and I've done it on a stock replacement Pulsar turbo housing. The replacement housing is near identical to this one, 
and any of the work I'm doing today can be done on your existing stock housing, just the same. I'm aiming for less downtime for the car, and I have a date for drag racing that I'm cramming this in before. Just can't help myself. And this way, I have this stock housing to fall back on if need be. I'm glad I did opt for a new housing now because the stock units are getting pretty old and many may have cracks showing around that wastegate hole or the bolt holes as this one did. So it may not have been a good candidate for this anyway. The other benefit is that the Pulsar housing does already come with a larger flapper valve, this guy here. So it saves us cutting this one off and welding a new one on. And it's a 38 millimeter, I believe, compared to the stock 33 millimeter. The port for the Pulsar should also already be slightly larger, but we'll be working on that more. I'm not sponsored by them, but I will say it's a nice looking product. They're getting a good reputation and the customer support I've experienced so far was excellent. So the porting will be the fun part, unfortunately. We've had to tear the car down a bit to do this job and some may be concerned about doing this themselves. So let's cover that before the porting work I did. I won't go crazy on detail here. It is fairly simple unless you hit a rusted bolt or a rounded head or something like that. Good luck if you do, you'll be all right. I found the easiest way of removing the turbo is to just pull it out attached to the manifold. Bit of work, but nothing technical. Remove the intake and intercooler piping, heat shields, stock dump can stay on, but disconnect the exhaust after this. Oil, water and vacuum lines come off. And don't forget to unplug the oxygen sensor like some hack YouTube guy did last time. Then undo the manifold bolts and work the whole thing out. With that out, I can strip it down further by removing the dump and manifold from the turbo, as well as disconnecting the wastegate actuator rod. The new housing shares the same bolt hole locations, so I've made some reference marks to line these up with the turbo core when it's swapped on to hopefully have everything line up again on the car. Hopefully. Some penetrant spray through the blades of the exhaust side to get to where the housing and core join may help free up a stuck housing. The rear housing is then held on by six bolts and the retainers. This one was apart not too long ago, so I was able to rotate and work it off, but these can be very bloody stuck. Fortunately, past me filmed you suffering getting this apart last time to show us a little trick on that. I've used a heap of penetrant spray, then some M8 by 35mm bolts and nuts with some old sockets over the end to act as a makeshift press. Space these at three locations that look strong and then loosen the nuts off to force the housing off. Jump between these and go slowly so the housing comes off fairly straight and doesn't damage anything. Now you have your housing off to play with, or the turbo ready for its new ported housing. Let's take a look at how I did that. This was a little hard to film, either the tool or my big head blocked a lot of the shots. But here you can see me starting to open up that corner leading out to the wastegate flapper first. I'm also widening the opening to this and working back down towards the engine a little to make a channel leading to it. All of this is done while being mindful of not making any of the walls too thin. The tool I'm using for this is a $150 die grinder and bits to suit. You may also make a rotary tool work, but it will be much slower going. I've used this flame shaped bit for most of this. Not sure this is best for the job, but it was the longest of the set. If I had my time again, I'd probably buy a longer set of bits, but this worked okay. Any info I found to get pointers on this mention to make sure you keep the bit moving. If you stay in one location, you'll very quickly have a gouge that you may not be able to blend back in, or worse. I've also tried to smooth some raised sections on the walls left and right of the flapper here leading up to it. With as much patience as I had, I slowly worked on opening it up and blending it back, stopping often to check my work and line up the next section. While I'm doing this, a small piece of masking tape has been wedged in the flapper arm to hold it open. Marking the flapper or the surface it seals to could slow the turbo's spool speed, so I've been extra careful while I work from this flapper port side to give a better radius. Oh and better late than never, wear your safety gear because this stuff gets everywhere. Or don't. I'm not your mum. To be fair, I forgot to wear a face mask for most of this, so I'm not a great example and never claim to be. 
With that opened up, I cleaned the flapper and sealing surface, then marked the flapper to try transfer a reference of its closed position. I figured while here, I may as well open the actual port itself up a little, and as long as it has 1.5 to 2 millimeters to seal, it should be enough. Again, that's based off too long on the internet one night, so we're winging it here. One thing I do know is we don't want to take too much from the area near the pivot of the flapper, so I left this all together and we end up with a sort of D shape on this. If that area is ported, the flapper may catch the edge and not close, and then we'd really have bad spool speeds. Let's look at how we've gone, starting with the stock factory housing. And here's some after shots. It looks rougher on camera than it feels and is largely pretty smooth. You could, and perhaps should, finish it with something like a sandpaper barrel tool, but I may have forgot to grab that and was running out of time. She'll be right. You can see now that the exhaust gas can somewhat be directed to the wastegate port. It doesn't have to go around a hard 90 degree edge, and some will even be caught by the wall of the port on the other side now that we've opened it up. I've shut the lights off to check the flapper still has a good seal, which it does, and is shown by none of the light escaping when it's closed. We can also somewhat see that this may have greater flow by the amount of light coming through on this test compared to on this housing previously. You'd hope so though, and the difference to the stock housing is probably even greater. We've gone from something like a 33mm flapper and approximately 26mm port, to a 38mm flapper and as big as 34 to 35mm port in places. That new housing can now go on the turbo, and things are really bolt on. To be fair, I was never promised it was, and only small changes were needed. First, I found the adjustable rod on the wastegate actuator was just barely not adjustable enough to give the correct preload. I ordered a new, longer end, which, funnily enough, was just too long, and a slight length was cut off. While waiting for this to arrive, I ground a slight section from where the wastegate arm pivot is, or the actuator rod end I was replacing was going to foul on this in a more open position. New rod end on and all assembled at the bench, the final test was to check if it was cracking open at around 7 psi and that it looked to have a full range of smooth motion past this. Sweet, time to get to reassembly in the car. Which, with the exception of filling and bleeding the coolant, really is the reverse of removal and not terribly interesting. Except now we have the excitement of a job soon being done, but the fear you've messed something up. Let's see if that's the case with a quick clip or two from a test drive here. This may look a little concerning for a car that should have a 7 psi spring, but let me explain a little. It actually looks really promising. Where before it would spike up to 9 to 12 psi and start creeping, it's still spooling up nice and quick, so I don't think I've affected that. But it now looks to be making around that 7 psi at most, like we were hoping. Well, actually, I'd like more. Who wouldn't? but that's what we're set up for and targeting right now. But then from 7 psi, it drops off and you're all thinking, you idiot, you've stuffed it and wasted my time, which may be true, but this could also be caused by how our boost control or lack of is set up. And I'll show you how I've tested and tried to fix this quickly. This next bit will largely be applicable for a lot of the NA plus turbo conversion guys, not someone with proper boost control. And the boost control in this car is purely that wastegate actuator and it's spring. Nothing else, no electronic control at all. The reference line that goes to this actuator comes straight off the compressor housing of the turbo. But the air and boost the engine sees and that the gauge is showing has to travel from the compressor housing through a whole lot of different size piping and an intercooler. Some of that piping may restrict the airflow and certainly the intercooler will, but if it's doing its job, it'll also cool that air. And when things get cold, they generally shrink. Right, fellas? So we may actually have seven PSI the whole time at the turbo compressor housing and wastegate actuator and be perfectly controlling it now, but then with restricted airflow and the intercooler cooling the air more as we get moving and making it shrink, our effective boost 
is dropping off. The ideal fix, of course, is a proper boost controller or factory turbo ECU. But as a quick test of the theory and temporary solution, I wanna get the boost source from somewhere between the intercooler and the throttle body. I say before the throttle body because I don't think these wastegate actuators are meant to see or seal very well for vacuum. So getting it from after that throttle body could cause a vacuum leak. This is what I've come up with. The factory turbo cars have a boost sensor here in the pipe under the battery, but that's not in use in our conversion, so the sensor was just there to block the hole. Version one for testing was some 12 millimeter steel cut roughly to the shape, then drilled and tapped for a fitting and bolted down. It worked, but it didn't seal very well with the one bolt, even though both surfaces seem flat and the factory sensor uses an o-ring in the hole to seal instead. Some blue gasket maker did sort the seal enough for proof of the idea, but the solution I have now is actually a map sensor blank from a LSA that has the o-ring similar to the factory sensor and is very similar in dimensions. Same again, a through hole was drilled and a section tapped to put a fitting before being bolted down and it fits fairly well. The blue gasket maker hasn't been cleaned off yet as I wasn't sure how well this would work and I was rushing a little, but you can now see the wastegate boost reference line running from this port. Here's a similar pull to before to show the results with this. Much better. It does still drop somewhat, and it could be a few factors, but I believe it can occur due to restrictions alone in the piping, and it could well be caused by a crossover right before the throttle body. May also hold that boost a little better on a longer pull, like on the dyno or in a higher gear. As it stands though, I'm fairly confident that's done the trick, and it's made the car much more drivable for me. I now don't have to watch the gauges, the whole time and I can just drive it. Or I can let someone else have a go without stressing. So Mrs. Brownie will be happy too. It's also nicer to drive. Before it was a little bit of a on and off switch with the power, where now it's actually related to the pedal position more. That may just be in my head though. Of course, I could be completely wrong on any of this or may have made a mistake playing with the turbo porting at all, but it's been interesting nonetheless. Love to hear what you guys think on the matter. The last test is whether it will stay this way long term or did I take too much material and will have cracking or some other sort of issue. I can't report on that just yet. I'm flying by the seat of my pants and getting these videos out, but at the very least the idea is correct and I'm flat out of time to keep messing around unfortunately. I don't know if you'll all see this before we head back to the track, but this is being filmed in the week leading up to that. Hopefully I'll see some of you out there and we can see how this budget turbo conversion setup goes. That should be the next video coming up, all going well with the car and the weather. And as long as I don't get any more dumb ideas before then. Until then, hope you've enjoyed or I hope this has helped some of you out a little. If it has, please consider liking and subscribing for more. And thanks very much for watching this backyard hack learn as he goes. Cheers guys.